Savior, but I want to talk about God giving, and so I've entitled the sermon God Gave, because the scripture we're looking at today is John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and I know that you're very familiar with this scripture, as is most everyone, and it tells us here, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. It is with this thought in mind that we look at God as a giver, that God is a great giver and has given us a gift that continues to give. And it continues to give even more as we have an appreciation for and an understanding for what God was thinking who God is, uh, who Jesus is, all of these things help us to appreciate God being a giver. And when I think about this, it is so imperative that all of us recognize, and as Karen was mentioning in her prayer, that Jesus modeled an example of life that involves all of us. And that is how to live life, how to live the Christian life, and giving is part of it. Our, our whole lives are wrapped up in, in giving. And we find the most joy in being able to do that. And it is in this one supreme gift that, we, that comes from the Father that continues to give that we learn so much about life. So Jesus here in John 3 and verse 16 and 17, he's the one that is telling us that it is the Father who has given his only begotten Son. His only begotten Son. There is, there is no one like Jesus. Never before, nor, nor after. And it is God. And you've got to think about the generosity of God. And we've got to think about how long he had planned for this. I know that we get, oftentimes we get stymied by trying to give people the perfect gift. I mean, uh, uh, giving is, is not easy. And sometimes we want to give what is is easy for us, a, a simple thing. And in our world today, I think most of us do this if we have children or grandchildren and the like. Uh, the easy way out is to give them money. So we think, well, well, God, since you own the whole universe... You own all the silver and, and all the gold. You own all of these things. I'd be really happy if you gave me a lot of money. Because what do you think about this time of year if God said, okay, and, and, and the offer to us is, I will give you a billion dollars. And you think, well, Lord, I'm not sure I could live on a billion dollars the rest of my life. Uh, well, okay, I'll give you 10 billion Lord, we're talking trillions nowadays. Could, could I have that? Because that would really make my life wonderful. Or would we consider when God says, well, no, I'm not going to give you money. I'm going to give you my son. Now, we're kind of, we might be caught in kind of a dilemma depending on where we are in life and what we have an appreciation for. We know the Apostle Peter talked about that we are not redeemed by silver or gold, but rather by the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Jesus explains to us that there is a reason for giving his son. And those that believe in, on him, that is in Christ, that they should not perish but have everlasting life. I think the beauty of beginning to recognize everlasting life is that everlasting life is, is something that is not just futuristic, but everlasting life also goes backwards in time. And what we find in Jesus is something that, a, a gift that redeems the time and that redeems our life as well. And that we realize as we, as we go through life, that he has taken care of the past, he has taken care of the present, and he has taken care of the future. What we also need to recognize 
is that Jesus is a gift. He is the gift of our Heavenly Father. And this is the beauty about living, even the human world, is being able to give gifts. And we, we can do that in so many ways, and as Christians, we're, we're called to do that in so many ways. To give gifts to one another, not just at Christmas time, or not just a gift that we want to give, but oftentimes the greatest gifts that we give to one another are those gifts of sacrifice that we make on behalf of one another when we present those particular gifts. Now, we're reading here that God so loved them that this is what he did for us. We also read, when we think about Jesus being a gift, when he encountered the Samaritan woman, Interesting enough, in chapter 4 and verse 10, we find that Jesus tells this woman here, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God. So, that's part of our question today. Do we know the gift of God? Do we know Jesus? And I have talked about my Subaru having all kinds of features that I have no idea that it has. And, and I've also explained why I have no idea is because I've not read the instruction. I, I hate reading the instruction book. And sometimes, so I have a lack of appreciation for it. And as I was explaining uh, last week, and that when I was driving through Stockton recently and the car ahead of me stopped and I was kind of watching and thinking I was stopping in time, my car, my Subaru, will stop automatically to keep me from having an accident. And it, it did. It saved me, you know, from having an accident and expense. But it has all kinds of features that I'm not aware of. I'm suggesting to us there's all kinds of features about Jesus, that this gift that God has given to us that we don't appreciate. Uh, fortunately, as we kind of go through life and we see things, we, we learn more and more about that particular gift. So he's telling this woman here, if you knew the, the gift of God, and who it is that asked you to drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living waters. So if it's a matter of you knowing this, and it's a matter about asking about the gift that God has given to us. Because the gift that we are given, it has an incredible value. And But Jesus is, and I, I hate to use this word, but I'm going to use it for lack of a better word, Jesus has been given to us for an intended purpose. There is an intended purpose in the Father giving Jesus to us that he things that he wants us to learn. And that's why I keep reminding us, and it's, it's interesting to hear again, that what encountering Jesus in the manger as a child, as a, as a baby, as those features that only a child can give to us, God has a purpose in that. God has a purpose in helping us to recognize that Jesus was born a woman, that he was just like any other child in one sense, and yet he is the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is our gift of salvation. And we can tend to think that we don't need to be saved until maybe the last minute. And on our deathbed, and Lord, I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to try to hedge my bet now, so let me give you thanks, or let me give you my, my heart, or however we might want to approach this. Jesus is a gift of salvation, and Jesus is a well-thought-out gift that meets and goes beyond the need or the wants of mankind. So we ask ourselves, what is it that I how the world looks at it. What is it that I want for Christmas? And what do I need for Christmas, as it were? Jesus goes well beyond that. And Jesus is the perfect gift. And so I would remind us that James tells us this, and it's, it's a beautiful scripture to help us. In James chapter 1, verses 17 and 18, we read this about our Father in heaven. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heaven, heavenly light, who does not change like shifting shadows. 
He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all the cre created. The world today is a challenging environment for Christian believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Looking for answers? Grace Communion International local churches in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto offers a comforting environment for Christians in search of spiritual growth and development. Contact a local ministry. Attend their local GCI churches at the times listed on your screen.